Hello, welcome to Code Zero, a series of videos that explores the world of code. My name is Pragma. Have a great time learning about code. Well, thanks, Pragma, for that introduction. It's Dr. Abstract at ZimJS.com. And we're continuing on from the last time when we showed a bunch of properties, but this time we're going to show properties with chaining. So, chainable methods. So there we are centering. If we want to chain the position, dot pose. So this would be adjusting the x and y. So if we wanted to hard code that to 10 comma 10, there'd be no real reason to center it on the stage at that point. But here we are, x and y setting the position, and we refresh here, and there it goes. So do we still have some scale going somewhere? Scale X. Okay, let's go make that out. All right, let's try this again. Now note that we've positioned it and then we've outlined it. So the outline's chained on the end. If we outlined it first, it would put it the centered place, and then the, you know you want to see that just so you you're sure you get it. You outline it there. This semicolon way back down there. So there it is outlined when it was centered and then we positioned it. So they're you know, separate from one another. But we want to probably outline it after. So that positions it. Now if you only want to position the Y and you don't want to position, so say you wanted to leave it centered and then put it at the top of the stage. So that would be zero at the top of the stage, but you don't want to touch the X, then you pass in null. Okay, so we save that and refresh. Now um, the X remains the centered X, but we've positioned the Y at a minus. And for the X, if we if we did the same thing with the X, for instance, we don't have to go comma null here. Uh, we just leave that one off. So position zero will just only position the X. And we refresh here. It keeps it centered in the Y and only positions the X over here at zero. So that's pose. Um, let's put it at 100 comma 100, say, and we'll comment that one out so it no longer is doing that. And then we'll take a look at another one that relates to position. As a matter of fact, it's relative position, which is move, or MOV. And this says start from where you are and then move it a number of pixels. So there we move it 100 in the X from its centered position. So we refresh here. Uh, at this point we almost want to do the outline beforehand, so let's put that up here. We'll put the outline first, then we'll move it so that we can see indeed that it is moving it. So here's where it was centered, and then we said move it 100. Or move it minus 100. Say that. Okay, moving it minus 100. Or if we wanted to move it up, uh, minus, uh, let's, yeah, okay, we'll go minus 100 up. And we can say don't move it anything. So you could say null if you wanted to, but null is harder to type out and perhaps less clear than zero. So this just says, move it zero in the X, but minus 100 in the Y, that's up. So there it is, it happens to be 100 high. So when we move it up 100, it goes right out of the box like that. Okay, so that is move. We'll comment out move. Let's leave the outline there and we can go dot rote for rotation. Uh, let's a little semicolon at the end there. Rote for rotation would uh, say we, we had done 45 before, so there's a rotation of 45. And there's its rotation of 45 or minus 45, so we save that up. There's a rotation of minus 45 degrees. Note that it's from the x coordinate, so here's the x, that's 45, this is minus 45, so negative counterclockwise rotation. Minus 180, it looked like this, minus 180. Refresh here. So it takes it and it rotates it about its registration point, whoop, 180 degrees, whoop. 
Okay, so that's rotation. Um, what else is there? That's position, moving, scaling. So for, for scaling, it's dot ska. And if we say uh, something like three times, what that means is scale both the X and Y three. So there it is, both the X and Y have scaled three. So notice scales it from its registration point. And there's one, two, three times as big this way, and one, two, three times as big that way. So that's a scale of three. Here's a scale of minus three. It's just going to flip it across there. Minus three this way, minus three that way. And if we want to scale them differently, so let's scale the x by 2 and only scale the y by 1. So don't scale the y. There's the x by 2, but no scale in the y. And if we flip it, we could do that like so. And now the y is being scaled by 2 and the x is not being scaled. So scale can work. By passing one parameter, we scale both. Oh, that wouldn't scale anything. We would go both. And by passing two parameters in that specific, and there you go. So that's scale. And let's, uh, there's skew. So skew looks like this, dot sk, or ske. Skew and the same, well, Actually, I can't remember. I think this just does scale the skew in the one direction in the X. So let's see what that does. Yeah, it's quite common that you just want to skew in one direction. It really gets weird looking if you start scaling in, or skewing in two directions. But we, we can. If we wanted to skew only in the Y, then we would pass in a zero skew or null, but zero is easier. Zero skew in the Y and or in the X and then a skew of 10 in, in the Y. All right, if we did want to do both, there's 10 in both, and this is what it looks like. So um, it basically just rotated, I guess, if it's an equal amount. OK, let's just leave a skew of 10 there. Oh, what other ones do we have? Uh, do we see rotation? Yeah, reg. So the registration point is reg. And you can just go um, dot reg. If we say a reg of 10, what that does is it puts the registration point at 10. And it'll appear to, like, it puts the registration point at 10. And then it takes the whole thing and puts it at the registration point where it was before. So really, it sort of looks like it ships it back. That's fun. And there's a reg y. We could do the same thing, 10, 10, and 10. And it's going to go back and up. So now it goes back and up 10. You might be wondering, when would you use that and why? But you'll just have to wait. We'll talk about reg in another code zero. OK, so that was reg. Alpha. Alpha is dot alp. So it's here, dot alp, like that. And we can say 0.2, for instance, and chain on the alpha. And there it is, chained on. And by the way, all of this stuff works together. So, you know, it look pretty crazy, I suppose. There it is, and refresh here. <laughs> is, that, is that where you thought it would go? So all of that chains on and works together in different ways to scale and skew and rotate. I think the rotation of the minus 80, let's just rotate something like uh, 20. <laughs> There we go. And that might be a little bit easier to understand what's going on. Yeah, so registration point moved it this way and that way. Scale scales from the registration point. So there was more of the, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. And we, uh, blah, blah, blah. So all of that stuff can chain and work together. We got to alpha. Then there's size. So if we want to do the width and the height, we've got dot sys. And we can say, please make it 100 wide. So now it would be square. Oh, uh, it won't be square. Because it, the same kind of deal. If you just give it the 1, it will do both of them. So if we wanted it to be square, we would have to say size either null. We could pass in null because it happens to be 100 high. So pass something in there. 
Oh, is that right? So null won't do it. We would have to hard code and say, please make it 100, 100, and that should size it to 100, 100. And there it is, that's our square. So even passing in null, it doesn't treat the, the y as not being sized. It treats it as a single parameter being passed in, which makes sense. Okay, so that would uh, allow you to size. Neat, huh? So that's all of the chainable methods for width, height, alpha, registration points, skew, rotation, scale, and two types of positioning. Positioning with absolute, so that's absolute position, absolute, and this one, the move, is relative. And all of that stuff is out in the Zim docs. Docs. If you take a look down at the methods, right here. There they are. Pose, move, alp, rot, sys, ska, reg, ska. Okay, there's other things you can do with scaling. Scaling has a scale two and a fit. Uh, registration you can adjust by center reg as well. And we talked about the expand. So all those are there for you to take a look. You can open them up and find out what they do. See an example of each one. Um, actually view the code that made them do what they, what they do. Now in terms of the X and Y and alpha and the properties, those come with CreateJS. So you won't find a thing about properties here, but for instance, if we go into the rectangle like that, and um, we can see the parameters that we can set, talks about it. We can see the methods, and here are the properties. This list Zim properties that were added or changed sort of by Zim, uh, such as width and height, uh, and there's the width only and the height only, but it also says also see CreateJS easel docs for container properties such as X, Y, rotation, scale, X, scale. So all those right there, all the ones that we just looked at in terms of basic properties, they come with CreateJS. So we didn't put documentation. You can go to the documentation in the CreateJS to read more about those. Okay, that's great. We got through the properties, and I'm so glad that I did that because it may have been that you know you hadn't really experienced what all those things do, and yet because we use them all the time, we sometimes forget. So that's our code zero. I am Dr. Abstract, and have a great day from Dr. Abstract and, of course, uh, Pragma sends her love. Ciao.